What's going on baseball fans? So we have the trade deadline fast approaching and in this video today I want to go over 10 trades that I would like to see happen. So let's not waste any time. Let's get to it. At number 10, I have the Texas Rangers trading Mike Miner to the Atlanta Braves for pitcher Victor Vodnik and outfielder Trey Harris. This to me is the most no-brainer trade out of the bunch, with the Braves starting pitching decimated due to the loss of Mike Soroka, Sean Newcomb, Mike Fultonevich, and not having Cole Hamels at all so far this season. They desperately need someone to help out Max Freed. The Rangers are going nowhere, and with a need to stash as many prospects as possible, trading Mike Miner to the Braves for a couple of prospects would do the Rangers some good. At number nine, I have the Kansas City Royals trading Trevor Rosenthal to the Cubs for Corey Abbott. The Cubs find themselves as one of the better teams in the National League, but one area they could use improvement in is the bullpen, where they currently rank 26th. A perfect fit would be Trevor Rosenthal, who's having a major bounce back season after Tommy John surgery in 2018 and struggling in 2019. So far in 2020, though, he has a 1.59 ERA along with six saves and could really give the Cubs bullpen a boost. For the Royals, they would be getting pitcher Corey Abbott, the Cubs' number 12 prospect, who has a 2.84 ERA, over 53 starts in the minors since 2017. At number eight, I have the San Francisco Giants trading Johnny Cueto, Alexander Canario, and Cash to the Houston Astros for Brian Abreu. For the second straight year, the Astros should trade for a starting pitcher by the deadline, and one option could be Johnny Cueto. This might sound odd considering Cueto's contract. However, in this trade, the Giants would have to pay at least half of it, as well as include outfield prospect Alexander Canario, who ranks number seven in their system. The Astros would just have to send back their number five prospect, right-hander Brian Abreu. I think this would benefit both sides because the Astros get a veteran starting pitcher to go alongside Zach Greinke for the playoffs, as well as a solid outfield prospect in Canario, while the Giants are able to get out of Cueto's contract as well as get a good pitching prospect in Brian Abreu. At number seven, I have the Red Sox trading Michael Chavis and Matt Barnes to the Miami Marlins for Edward Cabrera. The Red Sox are in desperate need of young and talented starting pitching, and the Marlins could use both offense and bullpen help to try and make the playoffs, considering they rank 25th in offense and have the second worst bullpen in the majors. The Red Sox have just that in Michael Chavis, who is expendable and has value, along with a solid bullpen arm in Matt Barnes that doesn't really serve a purpose for the Red Sox this season. In return, the Red Sox would get the Marlins a number five prospect and the number 68 overall prospect overall on Baseball America, Edward Cabrera. With Chavis and Barnes, the Marlins are getting a cost-controlled young power bat and a seasoned bullpen arm. In Chavis' rookie season in 2019, he hit 254 with 18 homers and 58 RBIs, while Barnes has averaged a 3.88 ERA, a 3.25 FIP, and over 14 strikeouts per nine since 2018. With Cabrera, the Red Sox are getting a future stud on the mound that can sit in the mid-90s with his fastball, a plus slider, and a solid changeup. In 2019, between single and double A, over 97 innings, he had a 2.23 ERA along with 116 strikeouts. Overall, I think this would be a good deal for both sides. Coming in at number six, I have the Pittsburgh Pirates trading Joe Musgrove to the Angels for Brandon Marsh. This is a simple trade, but would involve two big names. As of right now, the Angels are pretty much out of the playoff race, but that doesn't mean they can't retool for next season, similar to what the Mets did last season when trading for Marcus Stroman. As of right now, the Angels starting pitching ranks 19th in the majors, with only Dylan Bundy making any kind of an impact this season. This would be a perfect opportunity for the Angels to trade for a starting pitcher for next season, and a great option would be Joe Musgrove. He's currently on the injured list, but at only 27 years old, he's just entering his prime, and he's put up some pretty good numbers in the last few seasons. Heading to the Pirates would be the Angels' number two prospect and the number 43 prospect overall on Baseball America, outfielder Brandon Marsh. At the moment, he's currently blocked by Mike Trout, Justin Upton, and Joe Adele. The Angels also have another outfield prospect in Jordan Adams, which makes Marsh expendable. In 2019, he hit 286 and had an on-base of 367. His power is still raw considering he only hit seven home runs last season, but he has quick hands and good bat speed, so his power should only get better over time. Marsh would fit well in the Pirates' rebuilding process, while Musgrove will help the Angels with their pitching for next season. At number five, I have the Boston Red Sox trading J.D. Martinez and Jackie Bradley Jr. to the Cleveland Indians for Ethan Hankins and Lenny Torres. 
The Red Sox fire sale continues as they trade one of their best bats in J.D. Martinez as well as the 2018 ALCS MVP, Jackie Bradley Jr. The Indians starting pitching currently ranks first in the majors, but the offense only ranks 22nd, so they could use some more offense in a season where they really have a shot to end their 72-year-old World Series drought. In return, the Red Sox keep adding to their minor league pitching depth with Ethan Hankins, the Indians' current number eight prospect, and Lenny Torres, the Indians' number 27 prospect. At 6'6", Hankins has a plus fastball along with a solid curveball and changeup, but his control and command could still use some work. As for Torres, his ETA is farther away than Hankins, and he did undergo Tommy John in 2019, but he has electric stuff when healthy, and he has maturity on the mound and could see himself in the majors in 2023. At number four, I have the Kansas City Royals trading Whit Merrifield and Trevor Rosenthal to the Cincinnati Reds for Jonathan India, Hunter Green, Tony Santillan, and Mike Ciani. With the Royals heading into a rebuild, a couple of players that could bring back a good amount of value are Whit Merrifield and Trevor Rosenthal. A team that could use these two are the Cincinnati Reds, who currently have the second best starting pitching in the majors, but an offense and a bullpen that ranks 20th. Merrifield, as of right now, is hitting 312, five homers, 18 RBIs, and an 871 OPS. As for Rosenthal, he would help the bullpen tremendously given the fact that he has a 1.59 ERA and six saves so far this season after a couple of rough seasons that included Tommy John surgery. As for the package of prospects, going back to the Royals, it's a very talented group of players. First up is the Reds' number two prospect, Hunter Green, who has a plus-plus fastball. Number five prospect, third baseman, Jonathan India, who's just a solid all-around player with plus raw power. There's the Reds' number six prospect, Tony Santillan, along with their number 11 prospect, outfielder Mike Ciani. This would be a big package coming back to the Royals, but the Reds would be receiving one of the better all-around players in the game in Whit Merrifield, along with a solid bullpen arm in Trevor Rosenthal that could help propel them to the postseason and even a deep postseason run. At number three, I have the New York Yankees trading Miguel Andujar, Estevan Floreal, Luis Medina, and TJ Sakema to the Texas Rangers for Lance Lynn. The Yankees have a need for starting pitching, and the Rangers are going nowhere. With Lance Lynn having another season of control until he's set to become a free agent, it would be good for the Rangers to try and get something out of him. And what better place to go than go back to the team that he played for in 2018, the New York Yankees. The Yankees do have a major league player to send back, and that's Miguel Andujar. After a very good 2018 season in which he hit 298 with 27 homers and 92 RBIs that earned him a second place finish in the Rookie of the Year voting, he has really stumbled since then, missing most of 2019 due to a shoulder injury and not really being able to get accustomed to his new bench role with Gio Urshela manning third base now. They would have to send back some other prospects to make the deal work, and I think a package of pitchers Luis Medina and TJ Sakema, along with outfield prospect Estevan Florial, would do the trick. Garrett Cole desperately needs help in the rotation with Masahiro Tanaka, James Paxton, Jordan Montgomery, and J.A. Happ not showing much effectiveness so far as of yet. With Lance Lynn having a great season in 2019 and this season so far, he would be a perfect fit for the Yankees and would be a vital piece for a World Series run. At number two, I have the Cincinnati Reds trading Trevor Bauer to the Minnesota Twins for pitcher Matt Saratino and outfielder Mizial Urbina. At the time of making this video, the Twins are tied for the best record in the American League, lead the AL Central, and their starting pitching is ranked seventh. However, the one thing that has plagued the Twins come postseason time is effective starting pitching, and getting Trevor Bauer from a struggling Reds team would be a great move. The Twins would get another pitcher to go alongside Jose Barrios, Jake Odorizzi, and Kenta Maeda, while the Reds would be able to get a couple of decent prospects for Bauer before he becomes a free agent this winter. Adding a pitcher like Bauer, who currently has a 0.68 ERA and 14 strikeouts per nine, would be an addition that could put this Twins team over the top. At number one, I have the Cleveland Indians trading Mike Clevenger and Francisco Lindor to the LA Dodgers for Corey Seager, Tony Gonsolin, Edwin Rios, and Michael Bush. The blockbuster trade I want to see the most is the Dodgers acquiring Francisco Lindor and Mike Clevenger. In return, the Indians would get Corey Seager, Tony Gonsolin, Edwin Rios, and Michael Bush. I think this trade would benefit both sides, and here's why. 
First off, the Dodgers would be getting one of the best starting pitchers in the game in Mike Clevinger, who has a 2.92 ERA and 10 strikeouts per nine since 2019. This would only strengthen a rotation that currently ranks third in the majors. They would also be getting one of the best all-around players in the game in Francisco Lindor, who is off to a slow start in 2020, but he's averaged 29 homers along with an 835 OPS in his career. In return, the Indians are getting a package that would still keep them in the World Series conversation. First up is Corey Seager, who's having a great season so far, hitting 298 with seven homers, 20 RBIs, and a 925 OPS. Along with Seager, the Indians would receive young right-hander Tony Gonsolin, who has a 2.14 ERA over 54 career major league innings, Edwin Rios, who has four homers and 47 at-bats but hasn't gotten a lot of opportunities, and Michael Bush, who was drafted 31st overall in the 2019 draft and is currently the Dodgers' number six prospect. Another aspect to take note of is the Indians would be able to get rid of Mike Clevenger, who's currently in the Indians' doghouse after breaking COVID-19 protocol and not being honest about it, along with the fact that he's a free agent after 2022. Overall, this would really cement the Dodgers as the best team in the major leagues while also giving the Indians a package of players that will still keep them in contention as well as providing the Indians a boost in youth. So those are the trades that I want to see happen. Tell me your thoughts down below. Tell me what trades that you want to see. But that's all I got for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time.